The next most important thing is the vertical dimension of the face. Vertical dimension of the face. You can have a long face, you can have a short face, you can have a average face. And that has nothing to do with the dental division or the skeletal class. So my friend here has a long face. What are some words for long face? The correct terminology uh, is what we call hyperdivergent growth pattern, which means that the mandible and the maxilla are growing away from each other. Uh, they're also known as dolicofacial. Yeah? They're also known as backward growth rotation. This girl has the opposite. She has a short face. The correct term, which I'd like you to start using correct terms, is hypodivergent growth pattern, which is also known as short face, which is um, also known as low angle, which is also known as brachycephalic. These all terms are interchangeable. But basically, I'd like you to use the term short face. So right now, you're describing a malocclusion that's dental division two, skeletal class 2b, brachycephalic. Automatically, we're getting some accuracy into our diagnosis. So this boy is class 3, but he has a normal vertical. This girl is class 2, but she has a short face. This boy is dental division 1, but he has a long face. He is what I call a high angle class two malocclusion. Yet he has a dental division one. So there's all sorts of mix and matches. So now we have 27 choices. Why? Dental, skeletal, vertical. And they're all unique and their treatment is different. So if I have a dental division two, skeletal two B short face, I'm gonna give you mechanics bang, 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 bang. See how important diagnosis is? I can certainly give you the correct treatment plan, but only if you give me the correct diagnosis. The last classification is the amount of growth remaining, because it determines whether I treat now or later it determines what type of appliance I would use. Would I use a face mask with a chin cup or a face mask without a chin cup? Um, and this is what is called the cervical vertebral maturation index, known as CVM. Um, Jane, you have the CVM PDF. I'd like you to email that to everyone. I'm going to give you the paper. The reason is it's very hard to photocopy because um, when you photocopy it, you can't really see the vertebrae. This is why I want a lateral spine view, not a lateral ceph. Because this is very important to me. Let's just do it, explain it real quickly and then we'll, obviously all the stuff I'm covering in this opening lecture, I cover in more detailed modules through the course, but you've got to have some sort of framework. Okay, CVM 1 is where all the lower borders of the cervical vertebrae are flat. You will never see the lower border of the first cervical vertebrae. Because if you understand your anatomy, um, atlas, and, uh, atlas and axis, um, the first vertebrae you will see the border is the second vertebrae. As you get older, your vertebrae change in size and the lower border changes. So when you are a non-growing individual, all your vertebrae, the lower borders are curved. Can everyone see that? So when I see an x-ray like that, I'm not gonna use a functional appliance. I'm not gonna use a face mask. Vertebrae stage two, CVM2. So when I say to you, doctor, don't touch this kid because there are three B and they're only CVM three, 
That's telling you their mandible hasn't had its maximum growth and they already have a large mandible. So do not touch that patient because no matter what you do, you can't stop that mandible growing. CVM2 is where the third vertebrae, third vertebrae is flat, but the second vertebrae curves. CVM3, the third vertebrae curves, the second one is already curved, the fourth one is flat. So the stage is normally different to the actual vertebrae that's curving. Other thing I want you to notice, when the patient's young, their vertebrae are flat, rectangular, like a pancake. During maximum growth, the vertebrae become square. When growth is complete, the pancake, the rectangle, now becomes a rectangle, but with the width much less than the height. Right? And this is very easy to determine. And when you present a case to me, I'm asking you for the CVM. So, if you give me the right things, I don't want you to give me some dodgy models with an x-ray that I can't even see the vertebrae and say, I think this patient's still growing. You know what I'm saying? Right? We want to do good quality orthodontics here. So you will say, Dr. Pony, this patient is dental division two, skeletal two B, low angle CVM two. Bang! Without even seeing your records, if you if you've got the right diagnosis, I will tell you right, doctor. You need to use a high torque bracket, make the div two, div one, create an overjet for mandibular translation. Lucky if you at CVM two, you've got plenty of mandibular growth remaining. Uh, blah 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 blah. I can just give you the entire treatment plan. So, so important, the diagnosis. And this diagnosis does take a little bit more time than your current diagnosis, if any, um, but it's very accurate. Okay, so what we're seeing here is a young kid. And I want you to understand that this has nothing really to do with age, right? When a baby is born, it's born with a large head. Who would agree with that? Why? Because its facial growth, which is what I'm interested in, is already well ahead of its standing height. In the past, we would ask patients, are you changing your shoe sizes? You know, are you taller than mum or dad? Um, uh, have you had um, menarche? Uh, are you shaving yet? You know, we would take stupid x-rays like a hand wrist x-ray, which let me tell you, radiation-wise, is huge. It's four times uh, the x-rays I want for diagnosis. And at the end of the day, what does it show you? It shows you the adductor sesamoid and tells you whether you may or may not have missed the pubertal growth spurt. But at the end of the day, who cares? Because the growth spurt that you're looking at there is for long bones. Do you understand that? Right? So if I am an endocrinologist and a patient comes to me at age 12 and they're very short and they're getting teased at school, and I need to determine whether they you know, need some growth hormones to get them to normal, or whether they just haven't had their growth spurt, then I use the hand wrist, you understand? It's a total waste of time in orthodontics. This is what we're interested in orthodontics. 